Well, hello and welcome to the Eagle and Child podcast. We're so glad that you've joined us today. And I am so honoured to introduce my next guest to you. His name is Dr. Thomas West. Uh, He is the Senior Pastor of Redeemer Queens Park in London, England. Um, But he is a um, American who has been sent as a missionary over to help out the poor uh, prisoners of Mother England over in in the UK, um, of which I am uh, was born one of them. So I'm thankful for the the great missionary work he is doing over there. Um, he's also done a PhD at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and his you got PhD. It. Yes, thank you, Thomas. His PhD was actually focused on the writings of Leslie Newby who we're going to have a look at today. So Dr. Thomas West, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to have you with us. What's up, Layla? Thank you so much for having me. A huge fan of the Eagle and Child podcast. I'm a fan of your research and work as well. Really honored to be on today. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And I love your accent. I don't know if you've seen the show Ted Lasso, but your accent reminds me absolutely of him. (laughs) Love it. Such that is a, nice a massive accent. honor to me. No, no, no. We're watching Ted Lasso to stay encouraged in this massively discouraging yes. place. I was born in, uh, I was born and raised in Montgomery, Alabama. Spent ten Amazing. good years in in Raleigh, North Carolina, where we moved. Uh, my wife Elizabeth, of eleven years, we have two kids: a daughter named wow. Perry Elizabeth, who's eight; a son named Shepard, who's five and a half. And uh, they were both born in in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, wow. where I was studying for master's and PhD, pastor of the church one of the pastors at church. And then we moved over here just two years ago to start planting this new church. Such a crazy time to plant a church during COVID. I know it must have been hectic, but now I think, you know, everything's on the move in in England and yeah, believing that God's going to do something amazing through you guys. Very excited. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Layla. No, we're trusting him for it. Awesome. So we're going to be talking about Leslie Newbigin today. I think his full name is James Edward Leslie Newbigin. Is that right? That's Um, it. That's it. You've done your research. I have done my research. One of our more modern people that we're looking at. um, So born in 1909, very recent sort of guy. If people want to check him out, they can even watch videos of him speaking. So you've done so much research on this guy. Can you tell us a little bit about his background, his spiritual formation, how the man came to faith in Jesus Christ, and Absolutely. yeah, who he, who he he was in his development. Yeah, I, I appreciate you asking. Look, Le- Leslie Newbigin is one of the most Im- important people um, in, in in recent memory. He actually he actually wrote a book called The Gospel in a Pluralist Society, which Christianity wow. they put it on a top fifty list for books in the last 100 years, right? Wow. So yeah, fo- right. just just follow me on this journey, right? Yeah. Newbegin's born in 1909 and he's going to, and he passed in, in 1998, okay? Being born in, in 1909, he's born into to Newcastle, um, like for some where the beer is from, um, in Scotland, <laughs> okay? His dad was a uh, ship merchant guy. So he was basically over a port, was over all the documents, and uh, and he had a he had a really good like loving relationship with his mother, right? So 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 Newbigin grows up a little bit in the Church of Scotland. He goes off uh, to 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 college or to university, depend, depending on where you're tuning in from. And when Newbigin is settled in there um, in university, he actually has this vision. He has a vision one night. Um, he was on this like college mission, and uh, they were ministering to the coal miners. Uh, so, so they basically encourage these guys with the gospel during the day. They they try to cook some meals and and serve. And then one night, um, he's 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 lying asleep, and he actually has this vision of a cross. And the cross mm-hmm. is reaching out one with each beam, and it's actually embracing the whole world. And yeah. he says in, in that moment, right there in that moment, mm-hmm. he knew God's love was for the whole world. And uh, what even what he meant there really gets uh, teased out and parsed out um, in, in his later theology, right? So wow. um, <clears throat> he trained at Westminster and Cambridge and then would go overseas to be a foreign missionary or an international missionary to India for Amazing. 40 years. 40 years, 40 abroad, years right? in India. I couldn't 40 even years. do four 40 days years. in India. I went to India I know, for right? my best friend's wedding and I could literally only did four days. <laughs> It's intense, man. 40 it's intense. years. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, born born up there in the Northumbria. Uh, he wow. passed in Her- Herne Hill, uh, just south London, right here in the UK. Had wow. a little boarding school experience. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, in his university years, though, he actually uh, he actually was reading a commentary on Romans, and wow. he admits in his uh, he admits in his autobiography, "Unfinished Agenda." Mm-hmm. He says, "I entered I entered the program as a liberal, and I emerged as a conservative theologian." So yeah. even there, you can kind of mm. pick up on some of Newbegin's key markers in the, the mm. flavor of his, of his life. Um, okay. Married to a woman named, named Helen. Um, <laughs> she was actually uh, working in the same mission organization he was. Cute. And uh, that, they, they had a couple of kids while they were yeah. in India. They loved coming back and spending some holiday in oh. Edinburgh uh, right here in the nice. UK. So. A, a beautiful life, a beautiful life, but it, but just to maybe even like s- set an index for us. Mm. Um, when Newbegin was in India, I think I think there's one significant event in India to note, and then uh, one significant event upon his retirement from being a full-time missionary. Okay, mm. the significant event in India is this: when he when he when he arrived in India, mm. he he basically shows up on the field and he's like, okay, we ought to start working to share share the gospel with all these people Mm -hmm. around us i mean here they are that one's worshiping a statue that one's worshiping you know Mm -hmm. buddha like we have got to work together to reach these people and when he was there the uh the baptist missionaries were there the methodist missionaries were there the (laughs) anglican missionaries like the the people were on the ground but no one would work together because they had all of these conventions they had all Mm -hmm. these sending boards they had all these rules and protocols Mm -hmm. So new begins there and new begins like, guys, we have to, we have to start coordinating an effort because mm. people are literally moving into an eternity without Jesus here. Yeah. Wow. And That's as right. people were so resistant to partner, as people were so resistant mm-hmm. to really work together to share Jesus with people, mm. new begin actually formed up something called the church mm. of South India, the CSI, the church of South India. Um, the, yeah. the people actually made him Bishop of this new denomination. But but there it actually tells us something about Newbegin's heart. Unity mm-hmm. is going to be very important for Newbegin. John chapter 17 was one of his most favorite uh, portions of the entire Bible. Mm-hmm. Unity was Beautiful. a huge deal for Newbegin. Mm-hmm. But uh, when the church, now listen to this, when the church wasn't willing to, mm-hmm. to work together um, to, to, to basically share the love of Jesus with people, Newbegin had no problem being an innovator, like a missional yeah. innovator, creating new ideas, creating new pipelines, even systems to yeah. share the love of Christ with people. So he actually created a new denomination. So you can imagine yeah. me in this Church of Scotland missionary. He yeah. actually create this new thing. That's wow. is, is part of what he did. Then yes. Newbegin and his wife, his wife Helen, they make their way um, on a 40 day journey from mm. India to the UK. And they wanted to do this thing to where they, they, they rode on buses, they walked, mm-hmm. they would like hitch a ride with people. And uh, on, on that retirement journey in 1974, Newbegin and his wife, I mean, you think like 40 years on the mm-hmm. field. I mean, I'm thinking, just get me home. It's time yeah. to relax a little bit. <laughs> they're, on, they're on this journey home and they actually make their way through a number of towns that used to be strongholds mm-hmm. for the New Testament church. And as they were there, they're having encounter after encounter mm, after wow. encounter where they can't find another Christian, where they can't wow. find a church to worship with a congregation on Sunday. Wow. And that really marked Newbegin. He just spent 40 years of his life trying to grow the church in, in, in mm. South India. Then he and his wife, they spent 40 days on this kind of journey home, so to speak, back to the UK. Mm. And when they couldn't even find a congregation to worship with in Cappadocia, they get home and, and Newbegin's like, Some, something's not right. Mm. He arrives back in the UK, and this is where I'll stop talking. He arrives back in the UK, and my paraphrase is he looks around and he's thinking to himself, mm. what in the world is going on here? Why is the church in modern Western culture not living with that missionary urgency and zeal like wow. that church that I just left in India? Wow. So Newbegin, who's, who's, mm. who's from the UK, he arrives home to London and then he would move up to Birmingham and he's walking around with the eyes of a missionary in his hometown. And he's, and he's, he's asking himself, where is the missionary urgency? 
Where is the zeal? Where is the fervor? Mm -hmm. And Newbegin was able to see because of his time spent in another culture, Newbegin was able to see just how accommodated the church in Western culture had become with wow. the cultural script. Western culture wow. and the scriptural story had become so blended together that you couldn't wow. tell the two from one another and there was no power anymore. So Newbegin was provoked and Newbegin in his retirement years, mm -hmm. he actually had a more prolific ministry in retirement than wow, he did in those 40 on. years of being an international missionary. Amazing. Newbegin would go on to write some 24 books, hundreds wow. of journal articles. He would travel like wow. mad, trying to get the church in Western mm. culture to wake up and to have wow. a missionary encounter with mm. its host culture of which it's mm. a part. That idea right there is so powerful. It's yeah. proven to be so enduring. So much mm -hmm. of what's going on today through modern church planting new movements, it's actually mm -hmm. sourced in new wow. So much of the, the theology, like a t a Tim Keller at a Redeemer yeah. Prez yeah. In, in New York City, city to city, a lot of North American church movements. Um, mm -hmm. some, of, some of the best that's actually happened throughout Europe, um, mm -hmm. Australia and other parts of the world, it's actually sourced in new He's wow. the guy before anyone else. I mean, he was a prophet. He was ahead of his time wow. in the seventies and eighties, walking around Western culture saying, we need a missionary encounter mm -hmm. with modern Western culture. The guy yeah. was ahead of his time. He's a massive gift to the church. And I'm so glad we're able to chat about him right here. Absolutely. Oh, wow. What an incredible introduction to this yeah. man and his ministry. I know I'm already super massive. inspired. Um, sounds massive. incredible. I think you said he wrote um, 24 books, did you say, and 100 articles or journals or something else. Um, yeah. Can you dive yeah. into maybe some of the um, works that he's known for, some of the things that he wrote about, um, and maybe even just some of the big events that he was involved in in his uh, life and yeah. ministry? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Great question. You know, um, my, my focus on Newbegin is on his late writing. So 1974 okay. to his death in 98. So a lot of his movements, a lot of his activity, I have, have plenty of awareness for what was going on, but um, that, that's not really my, my area of expertise or specialty, but I, I do want to back it up with this. Mm -hmm. When he was in India, he got involved in something called the World Council of Churches that according, mm -hmm. according to many, it does have a checkered past. I mean, <laughs> theologically, it is this broad, broad river. It's yeah. fed by all these theological tributaries. Like there's some wild stuff going on in there. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. hard to even look at it and just kind of make a blanket statement. It's this or it's that. It's just, it's a bit, it's a bit messy. It's a bit confusing. It's this big, big stream of activity. Um, we, but but that, that tells us something. That tells us about the themes that Newbegin's going to be a part of later. Mm -hmm. Because Newbegin was so, he was so desirous to see the church united mm -hmm. and to see the church that. working together in mm -hmm. partnership and unity and mission to reach the unreached. So good. That he was willing, that he was willing as a Westminster and Cambridge trained guy, as a mm -hmm. Church of Scotland missionary, he was willing to go outside of the conventions when necessary to be mm -hmm. a part of the mission going forward. Right. Amazing. So that's that's that. telling of what we're going to see in his in his in his late writings. OK, it's very humble when he's walking. Very humble. Position. He is very humble. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love the the, the urgency, right? The, the urgency mm. that leads to innovation. I mean, that's a, yes. that's a big theme in his life. So good. A few a few books, a few books. Right. Newbegin writes this uh, this this one book It's actually a compilation of lectures that he gave. Um, the, the, the stone lectures he gave at Princeton. Um, it's called Foolishness to the Greeks, the gospel yeah. in Western culture, okay? Mm -hmm. The Foolishness yeah. to the Greeks are essentially his gospel and culture lectures, and they're mm -hmm. fantastic. Great place to access Newbegin to get into it a little bit. The most comprehensive book that he wrote is called The Gospel in a Pluralist Society. The Gospel wow. in a Pluralist Society. So like, over 250 pages. It's got a chapter just about everything that was important to him. It's like the wise guy towards the end of the game writes down everything that was like really, really meaningful and valuable. It's 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 right there. Okay, um, that's a, that's a really important book. Just two more. When he settled in, when he settled in in Birmingham, he settled in at Selly Oak Colleges, and he starts teaching lectures in theology of mission. 
a wow. lot of those lectures for what he understood the mission of God to be and the mission of the church to be is mm -hmm. contained in a book called The Open Secret. The Open Secret. I mean, what a beautiful yeah. title when you really think yeah. about it. It's like, yeah, it's a secret, mm -hmm. but it's open. God's heart for the world through the gospel beautiful. carried forth in the mission of this church. So there, Newbegin is known for something mm -hmm. called a Trinitarian theology of mission. OK, wow. so one of Newbegin's mm -hmm. big contributions is Newbegin locates the doctrine of mission within the Godhead. And mm -hmm. Newbegin's able to talk about how all three persons of the Trinity are fully involved in the mission of God. Amazing. So, wow, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful Can you concept flesh that out for us, like what that concept yeah. is. Yeah. So in in uh, in Newbegin's concept of the, the, the open secret, he would talk mm -hmm. about how the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are all equally involved in the mission of God. So it's the Father who has this idea. He has this plan for where we're going to go. It's the mm -hmm. Son who goes to the cross, who purchases the salvation of the, of the nations for all who would believe mm -hmm. in Him. And it's the Spirit who applies, mm -hmm. the, who applies the salvation to the church. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, got, I got just a, a note right here on it. In the opening yeah. chapters of The Open Secret, Newbegin reflected, I wanted to attempt something different, something that would help these people understand why the mm -hmm. church has to be missionary. So Newbegin wrote further, the present discussion yeah. was written in the hope of placing the, the debate about the broad perspective of the church, mm -hmm. right, to help the church understand what it meant to have a missionary encounter with modern paganisms so yeah, wow. it's a it's a beautiful nice. idea what, what, he, what he's mm. going with here the idea that the whole trinity the whole trinity mm. is involved in the mission of god it's a it's a trinitarian mm. mission for the church today wow. final final that. book yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll stop yeah. talking so much a, no, a really awesome. helpful access point a really helpful access mm. point for new begin is a book called proper confidence which actually deals mm. with faith and doubt and christian discipleship in proper confidence, Newbegin shows just how much of a flex he actually was because Newbegin, mm -hmm. one of his favorite guys to read was the Hungarian physicist, Michael Polanyi. And I'm like, okay. are you kidding me? Wow. Like, how can you yeah. not get, I mean, what are you doing? Like, you're into all this stuff. And now, like, we find out one of, one of your favorite guys to read is this Hungarian yeah. physicist called Polanyi. Crazy. And it, yeah. indeed it was because wow. Polanyi was this very important physicist that was actually an epistemologist as well, epistemology okay. dealing with that body of knowledge. How do we know what we know? Okay. Mm. So Polanyi wow. is, is uh, this epistemologist. That's all about how do we really know what we know? And he's approaching it as uh, the discipline, as a physicist. Well, in proper confidence, Newbegin leads the Christian on this journey of considering how do you know what you know about God? I found it to be one of the books that just has, has shaped and helped the way I understand God wow. more than more than more than most. I mean, it's top 10 for me, to be honest with you, wow. proper confidence. It's a fantastic and helpful resource for anyone dealing with faith, doubt and discipleship. Proper confidence is a must get right there. So that's just for Beautiful. foolishness to the Greeks these stone lectures at Princeton, mm. or you could go Gospel and Plural Society, this most comprehensive volume. Mm. If you're interested specifically in his understanding of Trinitarian theology of mission, the open secret, proper confidence as a college pastor back in the States, mm. I actually found myself putting that in people's hands. Wow. Um, it, it's, a, it's a really, really helpful book. Yeah. Well, I can really see like how each of those sort of, um, speaks to the different time periods in his ministry because you think of like modernism yeah. and the ideas that would have been coming up with that and so the the ones yeah. about the greeks and stuff and then obviously the pluralistic society with like lots of different gods and all that sort of stuff in his mission and then yeah. like, i think just with postmodernism and with all these ideas of yeah how do we know what we know and also deconstructionist ideas sort of infiltrating into the evangelical space that last book that you were talking about proper confidence sounds like it would be an amazing um just just truth to speak in and cut into those ideas and those lies that are, are trying to pull Sit. people away from god so that sounds amazing. it's so needed it's so needed yeah that's beautiful Wow, I need to get into these books. Um, Come on. So what we, what we like to do, um, Dr. West, is um, we usually like to um, see how 
all of all of the work and the ministry and the mission of the um, people that we're looking at sort of relates to us here in the 21st century. I know that you've already yeah. talked a little bit about the works, but how does his um, ministry and his words, how do they echo into church history, you know, moving forward? How do they equip us and empower us to, to move forward in the kingdom of God on earth? I love it. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great question, right? So, so, so New Begin's walking around. New Begin has presented a real challenge for some denominations and movements of the gospel to consider. What does it look like for us to have genuine unity and genuine partnership? Now, yeah, wow. it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a tricky subject because mm. for, for, for many, the things, that, the things that, you know, divide us are stronger than the things that unite us. And for others, mm. the things that unite us are stronger than the things that divide us. So getting everyone on the same page there is a real thing. But New Begin has been helpful mm. for encouraging some people to think about what is a properly minimalist theology need to look like? Like, what are a few mm. things that we're going to yeah. agree on to be able to partner together in bringing yeah. the gospel forward in mission, mm -hmm. right? So, so New Begin presents a real challenge. He, he's, reading the, he's reading John 17, the high priestly prayer, and he, he's just telling the church, Jesus cares a whole lot about this. We have got yeah. to figure out what it looks like for us to have unity and partnership. Mm. Another way New Begin really stays with us today mm is uh is on his insistence and this is probably the most enduring mm -hmm. feature to be honest with you is on his insistence that the church ought to be engaged in a genuinely missionary encounter between the gospel and modern western culture wow, okay that's great. so yeah. we probably just need to probe that one a little bit mm -hmm. in the in those stone lectures right in mm -hmm. in his book foolishness to the greeks newbegin asks mm -hmm. what's been tagged to him as like the important question he says, what would be involved in a genuinely missionary encounter between the gospel and modern Western culture? Mm -hmm. That question, first provoked by that question, why is the church in the West not living with missionary urgency and zeal mm -hmm. like the church back in India? So one question leads yeah. to another. He spent his retirement years trying to answer that question. Everything yeah. he wrote, everything he said, all the places he went, that was his, that was his thesis question. Wow. What would be involved? What is it going to take for the church to have a missionary encounter with modern Western culture? So wow. if we could even, and, and that, that right there, as I tried to illustrate a little from the bio, that shows up in a number of different, you know, theological traditions. It's shown up in a number of different mm. movements of the gospel, right? Mm. But if we could just think there, Newbegin was calling for a few things. Newbegin mm. said the church we have to get away from the cultural script that, that we just, we're, we're going to be prone to accommodate our lives to the cultural script of which yeah. we're a part. Yeah. Newbegin would say, we actually, we, we have to live according to the, the scriptural story and not the cultural script. So he wanted to, to tease apart again, what it meant mm -hmm. to be a Christian and what it meant to be an American or a Brit or an Australian. Mm -hmm. Right. So he wanted to, yeah. he wanted to tear these things apart again. Because the problem in Western culture is the mm. church was just way too wrapped up, way mm. too tied in, in, in all the different ways. Consumerism, yeah. right, politically, and on and on and on. That You yeah. couldn't tell where the, where the church ended and what it meant to be like a white American, you know, Republican began. Like, wow. it, it was just yeah. all tied up. Newbegin was calling for it. Newbegin's like, we, we, need, we, need to sep we need to separate these two. So, so the church needed to indwell the biblical story and that was a really big, big idea that that language of indwell he's actually pulling that from plain you the physicist i love that. we need to indwell that's awesome indwell the biblical story so we need to live together as a genuine community of faith mm. and then together as we're indwelling the story we're living together as a community of faith mm. a lot of newbegin's writings he trains the church to, to have a theological encounter between the mo the idols of modernity and the gospel mm. itself. So how do we bring the wow. gospel to actually bear on the idols of the culture? And he wow. has this beautiful, winsome, loving, dialogical mode to him as he, he just helps people yeah. consider, you know, like consider power. And he just kind of takes mm. you on this journey and you're reading him. It's like, not only does this guy make a lot of sense, his mm. tone 
is really to be admired. He, he has yeah. so much to offer. Wow, that's so beautiful. Absolutely incredible. Um, do you want to tell us any more about about how he speaks to that or would you like to sort of move into some quotes? Because I know that you run a very famous Twitter account based on New Biggin. Um, do you want to tell That's us it. some quotes or, or do you want to, is there anything more that you wanted to say on how he sort of speaks to us today? Let, let me let me just give you this. When, when it comes yeah. to how New Biggin speaks to us, how he speaks to us today, um, one of the things, and I, I know like you have a lot, a lot of like pastor theologian like mm. even some movement leader sorts tuning in for the podcast <laughs> when it comes to how newbegin speaks to us today mm. newbegin new newbegin was very clear that one of the challenges for leaders of the church in western culture mm -hmm. was to empower and to equip the laity like never before i love that mm. so big so idea so good New not just saying, leaving it like, with you know the semin people trained in the, trained in the seminaries but I, yeah i love re it. reading about you know him going and empowering even in india just empowering these people to then go that's and it. win souls and and grow the church it's just incredible that's it he, he's looking around western culture and mm. he's basically telling pastors of the church he's telling leaders of the church you really want to have a missionary encounter with this place mm -hmm. like do you really want to know what it is for you church to be able to engage the place that you live as if it were a missionary situation yeah. he's like we got to get the focus off of you you were yeah, like he would essentially like tell the leadership of the church your job is to equip mm -hmm. people for the work of ministry not to do all the ministry Beautiful. so new begin was a huge proponent huge proponent mm -hmm. of, of of pastors and ministry leaders reorganizing their time, reorganizing their days, not to run around and put out all the little fires of ministry that inevitably come for us mm. every day. He was a huge proponent of reorganizing, re-engineering our time to equipping people, to putting together resources, to putting together ideas, putting together awesome. sermons and books and pamphlets and put those in the hands of your church and encourage mm. them, you're the frontline worker. Like you're wow. the tip yeah. of the gospel spear. Like yeah. you're the front line of attack. Mm. My job is to feed you and to encourage you and mm. to resource you to be out there in the, mm. in, in the schoolyard, right? In Brilliant. the law firm, on the commute, right? Mm. Changing tires at the auto mechanic shop, like whatever mm. your thing is, yeah. it's on you to really bring this, bring this gospel to bear on the idols of this culture. Great. So pastors, ministry leaders, they ought to really re-envision their time to, to mm -hmm. help make that happen. I think it's a huge yeah. idea. It's it's there in Newbegin. Somebody needs mm -hmm. to draw it out a little more, but um, awesome. it's a real challenge for the church today. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mentioned a little bit about how you run a massive Twitter account with about a bazillion followers. Um, that is, is it called at Leslie Newbegin or what's the handle? At Leslie Newbegin. At Leslie Newbegin. It's exactly Amazing. right. Um, yes. And you yeah. just pump out content all the time, like quotes and. Yeah. yeah. That's it. No, in, in October of, 2000, of 2011, when I was uh, yeah. beginning the PhD program, um, I, I was thinking I'm, I'm going to start writing. I'm, I'm going to start writing on Newbegin, and I started trending in that direction. I was like, I, I'm trying to read this guy. I'm trying to understand everything that he's saying because he kind of has all these different little movements to it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll start a Twitter account and I'll literally tweet the best stuff this guy has as a way of helping me like really indwell his thought. He's incredibly yeah. tweetable, by the way. He's not very mm. scholarly. He can talk a lot more clearly than I can. Like, I mean, he can, he actually wrote without a lot of footnotes, but you clearly yeah. knew he knew his stuff. So yeah. he, he's, he's a bit fascinating how he was able to do it. Incredibly mm. tweetable. So I'm reading him like, I'm just going to start tweeting the best, the best of new begin. And over the years cool. it's grown. I think there's, um, there's a uh, 12,000 followers. Amazing. This, uh, That's this incredible. Dead British guy right now. Yeah. Wow. So, I'm a big fan. So in terms of experts on New Biggin quotes, you would be right up there with the world experts. Can you Come give on. us some of your favorite quotes, maybe some quotes that have, you know, really taken off on in the Twitter sphere? What are some great yeah, yeah, quotes yeah. from New Biggin? 
let's just have let's just have a little bit of a let's just have a little bit of an informal scroll right here okay yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, i know you can pull up the bots and they can rank the rank the tweets for you how about how about this a community of people that in the midst of all the pain and sorrow of wickedness in the world is continually praising God is the first mm -hmm. obvious result of living by another story than the world is living by. Wow. That's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. That's How about this? Done. The the place of the church, this is a mm -hmm. this this can get there. The place of the church is not in the seats of the establishment, but in the marching columns of the protesters who contend that Jesus was crucified outside the wall of the city. So the place of the Christian must always be on the side of its victims. Wow. That'll, nice. that'll speak to some stuff. That'll speak to mm. some stuff. Um, he, he, he says, uh, let me give you just one more. Uh, it's just so much. Um, it is a terrible misunderstanding of the gospel to think that it offers us salvation while relieving us of the responsibility for the life of the world, for the sin and sorrow and pain with which human life and the fellow man and woman are so deeply interwoven. I mean, this was, this was, this was so it he's speaking to the church about the nature of the church. I, I, I know for a fact, the biggest quote, like it's the, it's the perennial like new year's Eve quote that you have to be throwing up. The quote is, um, I am neither an optimist nor a pessimist. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. So wow. it's a beautiful <laughs> quote. When you really think about it, you spend some yeah. time with that. It's like, man, that really does kind of speak to people wherever they are. Like mm -hmm. some of us, we just find ourselves to be more of the warm, bubbly, optimistic mm -hmm. sorts. And some of us are just a little more pessimistic. N Newbegin kind of mm -hmm. meets you right in the middle. He's like, when you think about it, the Christian, we're not really mm -hmm. um, an optimist. We're not really a, a pessimist. Jesus Christ has, has risen mm -hmm. from the dead. It kind of correlates to another idea he had mm -hmm. is that he would say nostalgia for the past and fear of the future are equally out of place for the Christian. Wow. And there's a sense to where we hear this and we're like, man, that's just kind of strange. But I think that's actually what you get when you steep yourself mm -hmm. in the biblical story. You actually find thinking, you know what? I don't have to be like this really bubbly optimistic person. I don't even have to be really down and out on how mm -hmm. rough everything is. Jesus is risen from the dead. An entirely new day has dawned. I can, I can mm -hmm. live, I can live with a whole different set of attitudes toward the world. So nostalgia for the past churches do this. Don't we nostalgia mm -hmm. for the past? Yes. Oh, if we could just get back to that day, that mm -hmm. season of friendship, that moment in the church mm -hmm. or fear of the future. They're equally out of mm -hmm. place for the Christian. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. An entirely new set of circumstances Beautiful. and options are now available. It's powerful. I love that. Yeah, it's almost like a whole new lens to, through which we can look. Like, you know, as you talked about the optimist and the pessimist, they're two different lenses that you can approach the world. Yeah. But we're That's supposed it. to put on Christ. Like, we're, we're, you know, That's it's right. not supposed to be a worldly lens that we look through, <laughs> but look through the perspective of Christ and the perspective of heaven and you'll see things right. in a whole new light. Hey, um, I, right. I love that. That's awesome. And thank you yeah. for having a bit of fun with the Twitter thing. I think um, everyone oh, who has great. Twitter should go and have a look at your Twitter Jump in account. There. Yeah, Let's go. for sure, for sure. So um, you've told us a little bit about his famous quotes. We always like to just finish on a bit of a fun note, just with any fun stories or fun facts that you have about New Biggin. Is there anything that you can tell us about his life or, or anything that he oh, did man. that was just like a fun fact? Oh man, look, when he was, uh, when he just, I mean, it's, it's not fun fact, it's kind of like, yeah. oh gosh, that's kind of rough. Um, when he just landed in India, um, he, he was like late to catch this train and he like gets on like one of the back seats of the train, like literally at the end of the caboose, caboose is a word for everybody. And, um, this, uh, the gate, the gate literally swings around and it shatters his thigh no. and he actually has to be like rushed out of the place. He, he has to spend like a year in hospital and a little bit of rehab. Um, for wow. some reason, it's just kind of coming to me. I actually think he even got like a bit of a horse bone implant, like shattered, reconstructed thigh, like right when you're trying to start your go get a missionary career for Jesus. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind wow. of a hard time. And this would um, be like what mid 
mid nineteen like nineteen forties or nineteen thirties. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. That's exactly wow. it. Yeah, he's, I think in it's thirty eight. Yeah, Yikes. yeah. In India, yikes. Yeah, have fun with that one. Um, yeah, that was that intense. that was rough and tough. Huh? Yeah, there's that. I mean, when you read his letters, he uh, apparently the dude carried a typewriter in his briefcase everywhere, and he would like punch <laughs> out these letters to his wife That's and awesome. his friends, like everywhere, wherever he was. Um, when you when you go to his archives at University of Birmingham and you you jump in there, I mean, it's page after page after page of wow. these letters that he typed to his wife and to his kids all the time, wanting to know how the Aww, kids are going. So a hardworking, very mm. tough, intense man. Um, mm. But he, he loved he loved his wife. He loved his kids. He was a little dude, mm. by the way. He was a little dude. Apparently he was five foot four, maybe 145 pounds, loved oh, climbing yeah. mountains. I don't know why <laughs> that's, that's awesome. just coming out. <laughs> that's inspiring to me. Are, I'm like, I'm like are, five one, so. He's only yeah. a little bit taller than me, and I'm basically yeah. a midget. So <laughs> that's it. Come on, that's awesome. Newbigin's a little dude. Yeah, so, so wow. encouragement for the rest of us. Um, yeah. And you know what? He was he was in the room. I mean, it isn't really a, a, a fun fact. It, it actually just kind of attributes to some of the weight and the gravitas. Um, he was in the room with some with some with some important people for some important important moments in church history. Yeah. In fact, he was uh, he was one of the, the actual. Um, authors behind the Barmian Declaration, right, yeah. which was in incredibly important um, in history. So, I mean, Karl Barth Amazing. and others are, are sitting right there at the, the table, wow. and, and there, there's Newbigin um, with, that, yeah. with that wisdom from the World Council of Churches, with that wisdom from the Church of mm -hmm. South India. God, God calls on him at an important time in history where he's sitting there putting some information together for the, for the, the Barmian Declaration as well, which, Amazing. of course— which of course just played such an important role in church history so wow beautiful. yeah i love beautiful. how he's yeah. speaking like very theologically but then also very practically to the church so yeah he's obviously yeah. yeah putting it into practice and helping to empower the church to to move forward very inspiring exactly i mean you think like the guy literally went to india and lived in relative obscurity for 40 years sharing Amazing. the gospel with people planting churches baptizing people attending Amazing. to the poor and then god god positions him so if we're powering down i mean maybe even the way the way to even really land it is to think about god's providence mm -hmm. i find on a personal yeah. level i draw so much hope and encouragement when i when i read about new his uh, his autobiography unfinished agenda you get to just hear his story according to his words but you think like born in northumbria I mean, okay, like that's a that's a little place. Educated Cambridge, Westminster, overseas, forty years, sharing the gospel mm -hmm. with people, baptizing people, starting new mm -hmm. church communities, just kind of doing this stuff. Honestly, we don't we don't know that much about what happened in forty years, wow. but then God used all of that to where when it seemed like His season was over and the time had run out, God was actually getting Him ready for what was what what it what is definitely his most enduring work his most wow. powerful contribution to contribution to world christianity helping wow. the church in western culture bring about this missionary encounter with the gospel wow. in western culture that says something to the providence of mm. god how god has a season for each of us mm. and how god's building us through those seasons and Beautiful. for new begin at least bringing it to a real culmination in the end mm. Wow, I love that. I love that. And as you said, such a great encouragement to us, no matter what season we're in right now, whether it's a season of, of preparation, just sowing seeds and not really seeing a harvest, that God is absolutely yeah. um, at work behind the scenes, bringing about the I fruit so. and the harvest that he, he has for our lives and he's cultivating that in each one of our lives. So I just yeah. love that. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to add about Newbigin or London Town? Any anything you oh, want to man. tell us about being a, a, an American in London? <laughs> it's tough, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. um, I can think of easier places to to start a start a new church as an outsider, but uh, man, when it when it comes to when it comes to us personally, yeah, move moved to the UK two years ago, endured a, a really tough. Uh, you know, 13, 14 months of COVID, lots of national lockdowns. And mm. I mean, some, some, just some, some really tough times. I had a tough time on a personal level. My wife did, then my 
my kids yeah. did, especially especially one of them just had a tough time that, that lingered. In God's incredible grace, we're, we're in a good season. Um, this this new church is finally getting going. And um, yeah, R Redeemer Queens Park, our, our vision is to really work out a lot of what I've, I've shared here um, over time. So we would love to have like a New Begin Center for Public Theology, like housed Beautiful. as a branch or a wing of this church that we're setting up, equipping, equipping the laity, providing resources to equip the church for mission, huge, huge deals for us. And I found New Begin to be incredibly um, relevant and mm -hmm. in, enduring. So, um, wow. yeah, I mean, we're, we're grateful to God for his grace. I'm grateful to God for those years of just going mm -hmm. deep in New Begin and digging that deep well and, and mm -hmm. studying him. Um, maybe, maybe that's even just a, a helpful, like concluding, like admonition mm -hmm. to, to anyone yeah. listening to this, because like Layla, what you put on for everybody, like going deep into a thinker and like mm -hmm. developing, like, I, I just know this person mm -hmm. there there's tremendous riches there and there's mm -hmm. lots of beautiful people from church history. As much as I love new Begin, there's a lot of stuff I don't agree with. Um, mm -hmm. some, so the way he handled a, a few different, a few different bits, mm -hmm. but there's so much to be gained by knowing just one figure from church history, like yeah, really, right. really well. So I just think, I just encourage people just, just pick mm -hmm. someone, go deep in them. You won't mm -hmm. find him to be completely sufficient. Only Jesus is. Yes. But but have <laughs> totally. that one person you know. Have that one conversation partner that you you yeah. meet with them in their books and to learn and to find encouragement. It's been mm -hmm. a real blessing. And, and Layla, I guess that's really over to you. Like what you what you provide here, I think, is really helping us. Like oh, as a church, think like what does it look like to develop mm -hmm. conversation partners um, mm -hmm. with people from the past. And I think you're hosting this moment for us really, really well. And I personally oh, am very so grateful much. to you for it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, my friend. That's so kind of you to say. And it is honestly the greatest joy for me. I'm t a total church Come history on. nerd and love the, the heroes of church history. So um, it's so much love fun. It. And I'm, I'm so glad that it could be a blessing to people. And um, also so glad that we can have just brilliant thinkers and, and missionaries and, and doctors like yourself um, on the show who can just provide us with the amazing um, depth into these people's life and mm. ministry and work that um, is the mm. blessing to us. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Thomas West. Wonderful. It's been That's so it. good to have you. Yeah, well, if I'm seeing you on uh, Theos U with Nate yep. and the guys, or if you're ever in London, um, if you sure. ever want to read New Begin, just just holler at me on, on Twitter, Instagram, anything at all. I'm, I'm happy Absolutely. to be a part. Happy to help and however I can. Thank you, Layla. Also, what is your Instagram handle if people want to check out your, your ministry and keep up to date yeah, with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thomas A. West. Thomas A. West on Instagram. Thomas a. West. The church is called Redeemer Queens Park, Redeemer QP. Awesome. So Thomas A. West, Redeemer QP. Awesome. Love to see you around. Well, Yes, for sure. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. And to everyone who's joined us on the Eagle and Child podcast, thank you for joining us for this episode. We'll see you next time on the Eagle and Child podcast. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Eagle and Child podcast. That's all from us for today. If you want to support us, you can like, subscribe or drop us a review. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Eagle and Child podcast. We'll catch you next time. Much love.